Hello everyone, welcome to another video on standard form. Now, previously in this series, we've only looked at expressing large numbers in standard form, but we can also express really small numbers in standard form too. So some examples are things to do with atoms and molecules. Obviously, they're extremely small, not visible to the eye. So we have very small numbers when we're measuring these kinds of things. And I've got a nice example to start with. So we've got a water molecule here. You can see it's made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. So this is not a science lesson, but I just want to il illustrate the point. Now, if we're measuring the diameter of an oxygen atom, so the diameter is just from one side to the other. Now, we're going to need some um, specialist scientific equipment for this. And here we've got a value which is approximately 0.0000014 millimeters. So it's really, really small. Now, we could have things even smaller than this. So this is an oxygen atom. But let's say we uh, went a bit deeper and looked at the size of electrons um, and other subatomic particles, then obviously they're going to be even smaller than this. So instead of writing out all of these zeros, then uh, we need another way of expressing this. And we can use standard form to do that. So whenever we write anything in standard form, we always have to have a base number. And that always has to be between 1 and 10. So hopefully you remember that from the previous videos. So if we think about our base number using these digits, our base number is going to be 1.4 because 14 is obviously too big. So our base number is going to be 1.4. And similarly, with really large numbers, we always multiply by 10. That doesn't change. And now we just need to think about our index or our power. And this is where it's slightly different to if we were to have really large numbers, because every time we multiply by 10, we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But this time we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller because we've got a really, really small number. So what we do is instead of putting a positive power up here, we just put a negative power. So it's just completely the opposite. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to copy out this number again. So we've got 0.000000. .000 zero 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 i think there's six zeros yep yeah. and then one four so we know at the moment we're starting at 1.4 and we need to multiply by 10 some number of times to get to this number so you can see our decimal point starts here and we're trying to get to here so all we need to do is count how many times we're moving our decimal point so we're going to go one two three four five six seven places to the to the left I should say so it's not going to be positive seven because that would be if we were going seven places to the right we'd have obviously a really large number but we're going seven places to the left so instead of seven it's going to be negative seven so instead of thinking about it as multiplying by ten negative seven times an easy way to think about it is we're just dividing by ten seven times okay so let's go through a couple more examples so here is the next example. We've got 0 0.0000258. So first of all, let's think about our base number, which has to be between 1 and 10. And using these digits, our base number is going to be 2.58. And then we multiply by 10, as always. And now we just need to think about our power. And to do that, I'm going to copy out this number again. So here is our number that we're trying to get to. And you can see we're starting at 2.58. So our decimal point is going to be here. And we need to move our decimal point all the way to this point over here. So we're going to go backwards one, two, three, four, five places. So our power is going to be negative five. So here is our answer, 2.58 times 10 to the power negative five. Now let's take a look at the next one. So for this next one, what's our base number going to be? Well, it's going to be 1.9953. So 1.9953. As always, we're going to multiply it by 10. And now let's think about our power. So again, I'm going to copy out our original number. So here is our number. And you can see at the moment, our decimal point is between the 1 and the 9. So let's put that in. That's where we're starting. So how many times do we need to multiply by 10 to get to this point here? Well, we're going to go backwards 1, 2, 3 places. So our power is going to be negative 3. OK, so it's over to you now. Pause the video and see if you can have a go at writing all six of these numbers in standard form. OK, I'm assuming you've paused the video and had a go at that. So let's go through this together now. So the first one, 0 0.002. So we know that our base number is going to be 2. 
So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 10. And now I'm going to copy this number out. So we're starting off at 2. So our decimal point will just be in front of the 2 here. And we're trying to get to 0 0.002. So we're moving our decimal point 1, 2, 3 places to the left. So our power is going to be negative 3. So this is our answer here. OK, if we take a look at question 2. So first of all, our base number is going to be 2.2 .2 is our base this time. So it's going to be 2.2 .2 multiplied by 10. And now if we copy out our number again, and you can see our decimal point is between the two twos. So we're going to go back one, two, three places to get to our decimal point. So again, our power is going to be negative three. OK, question three, we've got 0 0.000558. So our base number is going to be 5.58. We're going to multiply by 10 as always. And now what is our power going to be? Well, if we're starting at 5.58, our decimal point is here. And we're trying to get to over here. So we're going to go backwards one, two, three, four places. So our power is negative four. Question four, 0 0.006015. So our base number this time is going to be 6.015, 6.015 multiplied by 10. So this time our decimal point, we're starting between the 6 and the 0. And we're going to go 1, 2, 3 places to the left. So again, we're getting negative 3 as our power. That is just a coincidence that all of these are negative 3. Let's just go on to question 5 now. So our base number is going to be 7.005. We multiply by 10 and now let's figure out our power. So we're starting with the decimal point just after the 7 and we're trying to get to this point over here. So we're going to go backwards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So our power is negative 5. OK, the last one. We've got this awfully long number here. So let's first of all figure out our base and our base. Remember, it has to be between 1 and 10. So our, is, we're going to put our decimal point between the two eights. I'm going to multiply by 10 and now let's figure out our power. So I've just copied out the number again and you can see our decimal point was starting between the two eights. So it's going to be here. So we're not going very far back. We're going one, two, three places. So again, for the fourth time in this series of questions, our power is going to be negative three. Now, I've just highlighted all of the answers here just to make them clear. And hopefully you can see that the process is exactly the same as dealing with very large numbers. But instead of having a positive power, you can see we have a negative power because we're just going in the opposite direction. So instead of multiplying by 10, we're dividing by 10. So that's where this negative power comes from. So hopefully that was useful. And in the next video, we're going to stick with the theme of really small numbers, but we're just going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to give you something that's written in standard form and you're going to write it out as a standard ordinary number. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Take care.